I remember the first time I started to read aloud a whole book to a class. I even remember the name of the, the, type, the type of book it was. I was doing a unit in my grade four social studies class. I was the homeroom teacher. And I even then believed that we should be integrating as many different subjects as possible into our social studies or our science lessons because we were extending the the curriculum and we were overlapping language arts and science and social studies and geography and all that kind of stuff. So it was a grade four class and we were doing a unit on ancient Egypt. And I knew that I had a book in the library that dealt with ancient Egypt, a novel. I it so old, so long ago that I don't even remember. And I started to read the book and the class enjoyed it. I That year I read uh, one or two or three books. Another one I remember reading was Lost in the Barrens when we were doing a unit on, on uh, the native peoples of Canada and northern Canada in geography. And so I got into the habit of choosing books to read, novels to read, in conjunction with my units. Then I started to think about the quality of book. I realized it wasn't enough just to read any book, although the the students always enjoyed the books I read, whether it was Gordon Corman or something else. So I chose books like Sounder and The Yearling and The Outsiders because they were quality literature. And while I was reading the books, I was also paying attention to things I picked up and read in the press written for educators that when we chose books for our students to read, we should choose books that had a higher vocabulary uh, uh, over several grades higher so that the students had to reach to understand the story and could pick up new vocabulary without having to struggle with reading it. And so started to read books that were more challenging. Not only did I find that I enjoyed the stories better because they were there was more things to talk about with my students, but I also realized that I was deepening the experience for them as listeners. And so what I ended up doing was picking books of a much higher level that had more things to talk about and I would do activities with my students that related to the book that I was reading. So they became not just a sidebar to a unit, they became central to the unit. In grade five and grade six, way back, we were supposed to be teaching about the native peoples of Canada, but in the grade six and grade five curricula, we were supposed to be talking about the problems of current native peoples. The curriculum wanted us and the the expectations were that we would talk about the problems of integration and the social problems that, that Native children had and all of those kinds of things as a way to open up the door to conversations about what we as Canadians owe to the Native peoples of Canada. And I remember reading No Word for Goodbye, which was about two to teenage boys, one was a native and one, one was a native Canadian and one was an, a white Canadian. And the white Canadian was staying at a cottage with an uncle because his 
I think if I remember correctly, a parent had died and he was living with the uncle and he, the uncle employed the native Canadian to do things with, with uh, him to help him manage his property and his estates and that kind of thing. And then at the end, or at the end, the idea of no word for goodbye is that these two teenage boys were forced to be together at the end of the season. And when the season was over, the white English boy realized that he had no, that he wanted the native person to say goodbye to him because he was going south again. But the native boy didn't have a word for goodbye, but he had a way to show the love that the two young men had for each other as humans. It was a wonderful story, and I read it at least two years. So I continued to do that, and I continued to advocate for the use of novels as central to the extension of, of a unit. And when I was teaching literacy across the curriculum from grades one to grade eight, I always had my students think about a unit that stemmed from a novel and what they could do with the novel study to expand on other aspects of the curriculum. So I asked them to imagine a board where they put the name of the novel in the middle and then they drew lines out so that they could talk about geography and history and mathematics and science and so forth. And all the other topics that came from a unit because I believe that when we read to kids aloud, they think about what we're reading. The whole purpose of reading aloud is, get, is to get the door open for children to follow their imagination and imagine what's going on in the story. After all, that's why adults who love to read go to the library and get books or buy books because they lose their sense of self in the, in the novel, in the story. And they become embedded, the, the story haunts them. That's why you can't put a book down. I'll bet you, some of you that are listening to this remember when you read The Godfather, the original book, and how you couldn't put it down because you wanted to know what happened next and what happened next and what happened next. And our goal as educators is to encourage our students to find that love of reading because without reading, there is nothing. I used to tell my students when I was teaching teachers that those who read succeed. And so we have to encourage our students to read. And we have to encourage our students to become engrossed in the novel and engrossed in the themes of the novel so that they want to think about things like justice, inequality, race, discrimination, democracy, poverty, education, and all the other things that some books say so well to our inner souls that we can't pick up by listening to a lecture. Of course, now we have videos and we have movies that we can, movies on demand, but unless we continue the love of listening to a good story, or reading a good novel, we are not doing our students any justice because each modality, hearing or seeing or speaking, is a different way of learning. And some students will only learn by taking a book. Even today, if you ask, if you ask adults, do you like to read online? Do you like to download a book? 
do you like to go into a bookstore? And you will find lots of people that will still want to either go to the library to take out books or go to the bookstore to buy books because they want the book in their hand. It's part of their experience. Others, my wife, likes to listen to a book when she's walking. Each to his own. But the important thing is those who read succeed. So now I've started to read online. And I'm doing this video as a way of saying I have finished reading three books online for easy listeners, for, for primary students who are learning how to read and learning, starting to make the jump from picture books to chapter books. So I've read the Boxcar Children, and James and the Giant Peach, and today I just finished The Prince of the Pond. I hope some of you that are listening and watching will seek out my postings on books to read, and I hope that some of you will take advantage of it with your children because some of us don't read very well. Some of us struggle with the same things we want our children not to struggle with. For better, for worse, I've acquired some skills. And although I wish my, I wish I had learned from my mother who took elocution, it's not so bad. I do an okay job and I like to think that kids like to listen to the stories I read. When you pick a book to read to your child or your student, think about what you're reading and think about how you can use that as a kickoff point to other aspects of learning. Because when we are thinking, we don't follow a curriculum we follow interests, we follow characters, we follow plot, we follow whatever it is that gets us excited about a book and reading. Whatever you do, remember, those who read succeed.